The Amazing World of Gumball is the most visually creative show currently on television. Look at it. Just look at it for like five seconds and you'll see that no other show looks quite like this multimedia rainbow colored vomit. And I don't mean that in a bad way. This show looks amazing. And yet somehow in about 200 episodes of Cartoon Conspiracy, we've never talked about it. It's been a constant blind spot for us. Well, that changes today. Theories for The Amazing World of Gumball are pretty scarce since absurdity is so intricately woven into the fabric of the show with the subtlety and grace of a how-to basic video. And yet despite this, there is one theory that's gained some traction over the course of the show's six seasons so far. And naturally, it's one that's tried to explain just why the show is the way it is. Could the city of Elmore actually be a simulation? Important distinction, this theory is not proposing that The Amazing World of Gumball is a TV show in its own universe and that all of the characters are aware of this fact. That much is already obvious based on some stuff that we're gonna get into. What we mean by is Elmore simulation is whether the city and setting of Gumball is part of some sort of matrix level computer program, not unlike the simulation hypothesis in our own world. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, the simulation hypothesis is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. It's a philosophical theory that proposes that our world is not made out of matter as we know it, but that we all likely exist in some sort of ancestor simulation by a post-human civilization. And a lot of this idea is expanded upon in a paper written by Swedish philosopher Nick Bostrom creatively titled are you living in a computer simulation? Technology grows exponentially. That's been the trend for the last little while. And this theory proposes that based on that exponential trajectory, we may not have the ability to create sentient AI yet, but we will eventually. And it would only stand to reason that as technology advances and simulated minds become easier to create, this future post-human civilization in possession of this technology may use it to run simulations of life before them for either entertainment or academic slash historical purposes, or I don't know, we don't know what what future civilizations that have transcended humanity are thinking? Hell, if we saw them, we would probably assume that they're gods. One of the biggest problems that immediately makes itself apparent with this idea, though, is that the amount of computing power required to simulate our universe would be stupid. It would just, it would be just a stupid amount. I'm not gonna get into the math of the computing power, but our fastest computers today can't even really replicate 1% of a functioning human mind. Let alone the billions of minds that would have to be replicated just on Earth if this simulation theory were even possible, let alone true. Though the hypothesis posits that we eventually may be able to harness the energy of celestial bodies for such power, and some hypothetical designs for something of this caliber do exist, but only from a theoretical perspective right now. We can't even build a Death Star. You think that we can harness the power of the sun? Okay, yes, solar panels, but I'm talking the entire sun. Of course, that doesn't mean the hypothesis is saying this simulation would render everything at every moment. Simulating the mines would be the bulkiest task, as simulating the rest of the world would only have to be constructed to fool our simulated minds into believing it's all real. Simulating everything down to their quantum states, down to the atoms that everything is composed of, would be a massive undertaking. So if we were to take, for example, um, this sheet of paper, the simulation would only have to make sure that it acts as we would expect a sheet of paper to act. And if we were to take a microscope to it, instead of replicating its entire molecular structure, the simulation would only have to replicate what the microscope would see. And things like stars in the sky can be massively compressed since there's no point in them being fully rendered for the purposes of our eyes that can barely see them anyway. As another loose, non-precise example of this, the room that I'm standing in is full of stuff, but if the camera were to render the entire room, that would be a complete waste of resources. And if I were to lift the podium that I usually use for these videos, the camera's only gonna render the part that's in front of the lens. And much like this, the simulation only needs to show you just enough to convince you that what you're seeing is real. Changing properties of things as we affect them in real time, and this would affect everything, including our own bodies. I gotta make sure to put it back right now because I ruined my entire setup. It's kind of like metaphysical solipsism. The position that, in short, virtually everything and everyone other than the self is non-existent, or rather that they only exist as an extension of the one true self's reality. Only with this idea extended to everyone living in this plastic world. Metaphorical. Plastic. Simulated. Plastic. This may all sound like insane ramblings, and if it does to you, yeah, I'm not gonna blame you. But if you're interested in this idea, there's a lot more nuance to it that we couldn't even begin to cover here, so I do encourage that you look into it yourself. The actual paper goes on to outline the actual plausibility of this simulation hypothesis in our own universe, but after all, 
we're here to talk about Gumball. So what does any of this have to do with Gumball anyway? Well, based on how the show presents itself, people have theorized that this show is taking place in a universe where this is exactly what's going on. After all, in the episode The Void, Mr. Small comments that there's much more to the strange town of Elmore than meets the eye, and there's no shortage of evidence of this idea. Most point to the episode The Money as a rather large piece of evidence for this simulation theory. In the episode, because of plot reasons, specifically the Watterson's lack of money, reality starts to degrade to the barest bones of its being, working backwards through all the stages of the animation process, short of showing the voice actors recording their lines like that one episode of Chowder. No money means no animation. What are we gonna do? Rattle, rattle. And pointing this episode out makes sense since it calls to attention the fact that Elmore isn't really a normal town and pretty much everything is revealed to be a fabrication, untextured 3D models and all. The episode The Downer is also brought up as the plot details what happens when everyone in town but Gumball mysteriously disappears. And after Gumball has ample time to goof off and then have the novelty wear off, the town is consumed by an unknown darkness. Some have said that this episode could be interpreted as the developers of this simulated universe simply toying with Gumball, like how when you play The Sims and build them a nice house and then lead them into a closet and then remove all the doors. Or put them in a pool and then delete the ladders. Or light them on fire. I don't know, there's like a million ways to kill Sims. We're a generation of sadists. Let us know all of your Sim murdering pro tips in the comments. But further in this episode, people have suggested that the mysterious darkness that envelops the town could be this universe's version of a master reboot or a recovery program, restoring the simulation to a previous state before everything got ruined. Not to mention that we also have the events of the episode The Void, as well as the entire concept of The Void itself. And as a refresher, The Void is a place that exists within the universe of the show that serves as a sort of backstage for the show, as shown in the episode The Disaster. But more importantly, it's also described as an alternate dimension where all of the mistakes of the world go. It also has the ability to take memories from people, and its function can somewhat differ based on which episode you're watching. According to this theory, the Void could serve as both a debug log as well as a place where the devs can just toss whatever they don't need anymore, like obsolete assets. For a real-world example, the game Skyrim has an area only accessible with console commands called the Dead Body Cleanup Cell, which is a small green and purple cross-shaped room that stores important characters that the player has killed during their playthrough. It's really creepy. Alternatively, the void could be interpreted as a secret glitch area that was never patched, like Minus World in Super Mario Bros. If you look through Gumball, you can find countless more fourth wall breaks and other tidbits of evidence. Gumball is like the most meta show in the universe, but the last big piece of evidence usually brought up with this theory is the events of the episode The Job, in which Richard having a job seems to tear the fabric of the universe. It causes things like unseasonal weather, problems with the physics of the world, bad collision detection, and even certain other characters glitching out. This theory interprets this episode as a collection of glitches that can be attributed to a bug in Richard's code, like a butterfly effect of programming. He's doing something he shouldn't be doing, which causes a chain reaction in the simulation, and then everything is destroyed. Sounds ridiculous, but game-breaking glitches are pretty darn common, and we don't know if the technology required for a massive simulation of this scale could also be subject to simulation-breaking glitches. Though, if the simulation hypothesis is true for us, it thankfully hasn't happened yet. Knock on wood. Okay, so that's a lot of episodes for any show with plots that concern the fabric of reality being torn apart. Adding to that, technical glitches like the one in The Signal are also a pretty common stylistic element of the show. So for a show like this that wears its artificiality on its sleeve, is there any doubt that the city of Elmore is in fact a simulation? This simulation idea is a tricky one because it's one of those theories where you can just rationalize every inconsistency with, well, the devs programmed it that way. You know, the rallying cry of programmers. It's not a bug, it's a feature. It's pretty similar to those infamous it's all in the main character's heads theories. So for the sake of sanity, as we go through all of these episodes, we're gonna be interpreting all of these events pretty much at face value. To start, the theory's read of the episode The Downer seems to ignore the entire end of the episode, where it's revealed that people didn't disappear and that gum Gumball was just acting like a total loony. You could make the argument that maybe only Gumball's AI was changed, but I think I just sprained my elbow reaching that far. Meanwhile, the end of the episode The Money is obviously intended to be an extended meta joke about the series itself, which isn't the same as suggesting that Elmore is part of some Matrix simulation. And this is kind of the problem with this theory. There doesn't seem to be enough to differentiate the idea of simulation from self-aware television show. You could say that Gumball being a TV show simply gives us an idea of how the simulation is 
constructed. What the building blocks of this simulation would look like as opposed to our understanding of matter. That Elmore could be a simulation that's taken the form of a TV show. Like the difference between the theory of evolution and a theory of everything. Though that's still really just a roundabout way of saying that Gumball is a self-aware TV show. Although the existence of a dimension like the Void could still hold huge ramifications whether or not Gumball is a simulation. As has been well established, the characters of Gumball are aware of the fact that they're not entirely organic. They've been shown to learn and relearn this fact in episodes like the previously mentioned The Signal and The Kids when Darwin and Gumball learn that they're incapable of aging. And while it's true that places like The Void are capable of purging memories from people, there are also workarounds, as shown by Mr. Small's hat. And with the sheer amount of fourth wall breaks in this show, it seems fair to assume that these characters are always somewhat aware of their situation, whether it's consciously or subconsciously. Which, if we continue down this road of Elmore being a simulation or Gumball being a self-aware TV show, that brings us to a question that we haven't considered yet. What would a society that knows it's simulated be like? Economist Robin Hansen proposes in his paper How to Live in a Simulation that simulated persons granted self-awareness may begin to act more out of self-interest, as well as more nihilistically armed with the knowledge that the simulation of themselves may end at any moment. To quote from his document, Your motivation to save for retirement or to help the poor in Ethiopia might be muted by realizing that in your simulation, you will never retire, and there is no Ethiopia. Additionally, Hansen proposes that self-aware beings that are in turn self-aware of being simulated would likely strive to be more interesting and entertaining to avoid their simulation being turned off, deprogrammed, or being repurposed to a non-conscious part of the simulation. Or in the case of The Amazing World of Gumball, decommissioned and then relegated to an existence in the Void. There's even evidence supporting this. In the episode where the Void is introduced, we find that Molly had been relocated to the Void for little other reason than she's boring. I got boring. I do loads of cool stuff. I collect pencils. I got red ones, I got blue ones, I got yellow ones, I got... So where are we after everything that we've talked about and all of the existential crises that we've been through today? Well, the evidence of Elmore being a simulation is really compelling, but at the same time, there's a lot of it that conflates with the proven fact that The Amazing World of Gumball is a television show within its own universe. And the distinction that this theory makes between the two is kind of negligible in the end. So with that in mind, I'm going to have to rate the conspiracy of The Amazing World of Gumball being a simulation 2.5 Watersons out of 5. But that's just me. What do you think? Do you think that Elmore is part of a larger simulation, or are you satisfied with the show's explanation of self-awareness? Do you think we might be living in a simulation? And if you want to learn more about the simulation hypothesis, I'm going to post a comment below this video with links to both the Bofstrom and the Hansen papers so that you can thumb through them yourself, because there's a lot of cool stuff in there that we just did not have time to cover today. But most importantly, which member of the Watterson family do you relate to the most? I said in an earlier video that I feel like I'm a cross between Carrie and Banana Joe, but within the family unit, I feel like I'm a combination of just the worst qualities of Richard and Nicole. Be sure to leave your thoughts in the comments, and also while you're down there, let us know of any conspiracies you'd like us to take a look at in the future. In the meantime, don't forget to subscribe to Channel Frederator and click that little bell icon next to the subscribe button to become part of our notification squad. And if you'd like, consider donating to our Patreon, where we post extended creator interviews, behind the scenes footage, all kinds of awesome stuff. I'm Jacob with Channel Frederator, and before you go today, remember, Frederator will-